Yo, what's going on E7 fam as well as Overlord fans? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat. This video will be my first impressions of the woman with an Ayn's body pillow, who just also happens to be my favorite character in the Overlord franchise, Albedo. And hopefully my pronunciation of her name throughout the video doesn't trigger you, because I might alternate between Albedo and Albedo, since her name is derived from the word Albedo, the reflective property of an object. Objects that have high Albedo appear as pure white, as you can see per her endgame description. Anyways, if you're here for the Overlord collab, please check out my impressions for Ein's first, as well as my new player guide, as they are more tailored towards a new player experience. Albedo is a PvP-centric unit designed for veteran players, but unlike Shaltir, she is, at least in my opinion, somewhat new player friendly. You might find some value for her as, like, say, an off-tank in PvE. As always, you should roll for a limited collab unit as you never know when or if they will return. Anyways, enough yapping. On with Albedo's ultimate animation. Oh, uh, why is every animation in this collab so beautiful? Oh my god, the animation team and the art department are just absolutely killing it with the Overlord collab. Speaking of killing it, Albedo's Japanese voice in not only Epic 7, but the Overlord anime, which is of course Yumihara. You may recognize her as the voice of Kazumi Mishima from Tekken 7, Anastasia from the Fate franchise, and Yumi from the Senran Kaga franchise in all of her bouncy glory. Moving on to Albedo's stats, she is a 5-star Earth Knight of the Sagittarius Zodiac symbol, meaning she shares a stat line with Yulha, Ambitious Tywin, and Fallen Cecilia. She boasts very high defense and health compared to the average 5-star in Epic 7, but slightly below average speed, and of course below average attack since she is a knight. Attack doesn't really matter on this character when she's a health scaling hero, which you'll find out when we talk about the skills in just a few moments. For her imprints, she has effect resistance for the team, which is nice. And then, of course, because she's a health scaling hero, health percentage is going to be her self imprint, meaning that it's worth picking up a couple of dupes if you really want to maximize how tanky Albedo can be. As always, before we talk about the character on the whole, let's go over their skills really quick so that, that way we're all on the same page. Starting with Albedo's skill 3 and her ultimate, Rage of Nazareth. You acquire 3 souls upon use and it has a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on skill level. Fiercely attacks the wicked enemy, with a 75-100% to 100 chance each to dispel all buffs from the target depending on skill level and make them unable to be buffed and decrease their defense for 2 turns. Damage dealt increases proportional to Albedo's max health. Soul burn effect for the cost of 10 souls. Skill cooldown is decreased by 2 turns, essentially going from a 4 to 5 turn cooldown to a 2 to 3 turn cooldown. Albedo's passive skill is Aegis Unfold. When an ally suffers a critical hit, decreases that damage suffered by 15 to 20% depending on skill level. When an ally, except for Albedo, suffers a critical hit, counterattacks with Let's Go Bicorn. Let's go Bicorn can only be activated once every two turns. When more than one damage reduction effect is granted, only the strongest effect is applied. Let's go Bicorn is an AoE attack that dispels one buff from all enemies before increasing the speed of Albedo for two turns. Damage dealt increases proportional to Albedo's max health. Also, I think it's really funny that, well, in the animation, Albedo doesn't actually ride the Bicorn. For those of you who are familiar with Overlord lore, virgins cannot ride the bicorn therefore well it's implying that albedo's purity is intact and finally we come to albedo's basic skill no need for words attacks the enemy with a bardiche before increasing combat readiness of albedo by 15 to 20 percent based on skill level a successful attack meaning that the opponent doesn't dodge it deals additional damage proportional to albedo's max health damage dealt increases proportional to albedo's max health so essentially, the move's base damage is affected by Albedo's max health, and then you get additional damage at the end of the attack, essentially like fixed damage or true damage, for those of you who are familiar with that term, at the end of the move, depending on Albedo's max health. Okay, so now that we've gone over the kit, where to begin? Albedo is perhaps the hardest character, I think, to evaluate in the Overlord collab. Let's start by talking about her passive skill, Aegis Unfold. 
The 20% critical hit damage reduction on this thing is very strong, and it's reminiscent of an artifact like Adamant Shield or Little Queen Charlotte's passive, A Queen's Dignity. Those things are very strong, and if we give her Arius, you know, the artifact that most tanks in the game wear, she could definitely be a solid option for mitigating damage for her team. This alone would be serviceable for you new players looking for a tank. You know, just slap Arius on them, and, you know, she could carry you through the earlier parts of the game. The thing is, there's going to be better options out there, right? Crimson Armin and Unbound Knight Arwell are pretty much the game's two premier mitigation knights at this point, and I don't really think Albedo brings anything to the table that they don't. So needless to say, being a pure tank, I don't think is Albedo's strong suit. The Bicorn attack that's on the skill too, you know, the fact that it strips buffs, gives her a pretty good bit of utility, but it being a counter attack as well as an AoE attack means that she's going to have some issues fighting characters like Last Rider Krowl as well as Lionheart Sermia. The speed buff though on Bicorn is a welcome buff because it synergizes really well with the counter set if you decide to go that route with Albedo. Her basic skill, No More Words, gives 20% combat readiness as well as built-in true damage on it, making counters with her monstrously good. Usually the drawback to a counter set is leaving stats on the table, basically the speed that you would get from the speed set. So having a built-in speed buff is definitely welcome here. Finally, we come back around to her skill 3, Rage of Nazareth. This move doesn't really seem like much compared to something like, say, Last Rider Krowl's uh, mobile weapon Siegfried, or even like Yulha's Symphony of Agony. Those are kind of, you know, ultimates that tanks have that just delete units. This thing is more akin to something like Alvira's ultimate, which is a full strip as well as a two-turn defense break. And I think people really are underestimating how good those kinds of moves actually are. This basically means that Albedo's first turn can be immediately followed up by a burst damage DPS, like say maybe Lone Crest of Bologna or Savior Auden, to delete nearly anything from the enemy team. Whether it's a tank or a key DPS, it's gone if you combo Rage of Nazarek into some kind of strong single target nuke. Soul Burn on this thing, by the way, is pretty cheap at 10 souls, and it reduces the cooldown of it, which means it's pretty spammable, so... If you've got a book to start with Albedo, you might be able to secure multiple kills with this thing. What I think people are really apprehensive about with Albedo is a few things. Number one, what's the damage multipliers look like on this character? Because this video has her landing critical strikes and doing just so-so to really poor damage. And I really don't think anyone wants to build a critical hit damage build on a character that can very easily reach over 30k HP. So the trade-off between HP scaling versus crit hit chance, that's going to end up being a discussion that a lot of people have and a lot of people are going to want to figure out right away. How good also is the bonus damage on the skill one, as well as the potential bonus damage on the skill two with our artifact that we'll talk about later. If those kinds of things are too low, well, then it's going to seem like she's not very good as like an off tank slash off DPS character. The second thing I think people are worried about is the current meta. HP scalers are really bad, in my opinion, in the current format. Injury is a very real uh, problem right now in the current state of PvP, thanks to Urban Shadow Shu and Death Dealer Ray, both of which are characters you're going to see very often in things like Guild Wars and even World Arena. Injury really invalidates a lot of Albedo's impact, right? On top of that, you have characters like Midnight Galilius and Hua Yang that just completely kill any unit outright in one hit if their HP is over a certain threshold. That, honestly, kind of sucks. And this is why I said at the start that I think this character is really hard to evaluate because we don't really know the damage on the S1 or S2, and that could be a big knock against her if it's not good. Uh, she could be your main tank, but... Why am I playing her over other premium options like Crimson Armin or Arwell? And yeah, injury is definitely a common playstyle right now, which is, again, hostile to this type of character. All that said, though, I'm still pretty optimistic on the character. 
I think having a low cooldown full strip plus defense break on a character that is a dedicated adamant shield that churns out damage is fine, especially for someone like me who prefers to play more slow and methodical games. So, how do we play her? Counter set makes the most sense to me because you can basically high roll your opponent and get a lot of free combat readiness and free fixed damage. As for the offset, immunity is good in a lot of scenarios, but if you want to be a little bit greedier or your gear is just not as good, health also seems like a pretty good two-piece offset. In my opinion, I would probably forego critical hit chance and just go for a really dummy thick albedo with a ton of HP and defense, like over 30k HP if I can get it. I could also see an argument for protection set on this character, especially if you're worried about injury, having that barrier at the start will mitigate some of that injury loss. There's also probably a, a bruiser build in here for this character. I mean, again, the video has her doing critical hits, so there's probably a build for that. I mean, Fallen Cecilia is a character with the same stat line, and, you know, people did just fine with a bruiser build on her, so why can't it work for Albedo? Anyways, let's move on to the artifact. And that artifact is 3F. After attacking, has a 50 to 100% chance, depending on artifact level, to deal additional damage to the target. Additional damage increases proportional to the caster's max health. So 3F is just Rocket Punch Gauntlet, but for Hellscalers. Or put another way, it's just Spear of a New Dawn, but for Hellscalers. Both of which are insane artifacts that you really want at plus 30. So whether you don't like Albedo or you like Albedo, you're probably pulling on this banner because this artifact is basically a staple. Keep two copies for sure. We all made the same mistake during the Espa collab. Rocket Punch is a format defining artifact, right? And a lot of us only have one copy of the thing and it's causing a lot of issues. 3F is the same artifact, just shifted for health scalers instead of defense scalers. So if it's even like, two-thirds to three-fourths as good as Rocket Punch Gauntlet, you're going to kick yourself if you only have one of these things. So you want to get as many copies as possible. I do think that this is the best artifact on Albedo. It does have other applications, like, for example, Last Rider Crow and Bellion might be pretty good options with this thing. But if you want to play Albedo, I do think this is the best option. The only other realistic options I could think of are the two old reliable broken artifacts on Knights, one being Arius, in case you want to play her as a main tank, which you know, you might have some success with it, right? And then the other being Elber's Ritual Sword, which is just a really broken artifact on any knight that has a really strong basic skill, which Albedo obviously does. The problem is that, well, Elber's Ritual Swords don't really grow on trees, and last I checked, like, four or five meta units use the thing, so you probably don't have a ton of them laying around. So, might as well go for the 3F. But anyways, those are my thoughts on Albedo and her artifacts. Let me know down in the comments below how you feel about the character. I feel like this is, again, going to be the one that most people are conflicted on because she's most people's waifu and she's the hardest one to evaluate and she might not be very good. Or, you know, who knows? She might be really, really good. Anyways, if you haven't already done so, feel free to check out my first impressions for Ainz and Shaltir. I will link both of them down in this video's description. And if you liked the video and you've made it all the way to the end, please consider dropping a like or subscribing to the channel. It does help me out a ton and it costs you nothing. It's essentially uh, the best thing you could do for a content creator and it would help me out immensely. Lastly, if you want to see me play Albedo next week when she's live, you can do so over on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye now.